We've seen the reactivity of thiols as nucleophiles, and a lot of those elementary steps are comparable to reactions of alcohols. But what really makes thiols unique and distinct from alcohols is their capacity to undergo oxidation reactions. And in fact, the oxidation of thiols in biochemical systems is a critical defense against oxidative damage. And so thiols are a very important set of antioxidants in the body and other biochemical systems. The essence of the problem is that our body uses O2 as the terminal electron acceptor in energy production, for example, in the electron transport chain. This sounds great because oxygen is a highly electrophilic molecule. The problem is that if the reduction of O2 is not complete, that is, if water is not formed, then other reduced versions of O2 can form that are still reactive, things like the superoxide anion, O2 with an additional electron, hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, hypochlorous acid, HOCl, and all of these contain oxygen that remains electrophilic and remains reactive, and they're called collectively reactive oxygen species, or ROS for short. And the problem with ROS is that they can in turn oxidize important biochemical compounds like lipids, fatty acids, and even the nitrogenous bases of DNA. And this results in oxidative damage. You can imagine that if one of the nitrogenous bases is oxidized, this is going to prevent DNA, for example, from forming the familiar double helix and forming hydrogen bonds. So biochemical systems need a way to protect against the damaging effects of reactive oxygen species. And thiols are one of the most important and abundant ways to do this. And the basic idea is that the thiol sulfhydryl group, the SH group, which we find in cysteine, many of which are located in specialized enzymes for this purpose, can be oxidized to different types of acids as SO bonds are formed. And while the specific details of this process are really beyond the scope of Chem 2313, the basic idea of all of these reactions is that the nucleophilic sulfur atom coordinates to some electrophilic source of oxygen in some kind of elementary step like association of a nucleophile or even SN2. This can happen once, twice, or even three times, and the resulting oxidized products are different types of acids containing SO bonds. So for example, we have sulfenic acids with an SO single bond, sulfenic acids with an SO double bond and a separate SOH group, and sulfonic acids, which we've seen before as examples of good leaving groups with two SO double bonds and an OH group. These oxidation reactions incorporate these problematic ROS species into the active sites of enzymes where they can be comfortably held until some other reducing agent comes along and transfers the oxygen further, hopefully, ideally, ultimately reducing it to water. We'll return to these sulfur oxygen acids in a second, but there's one other type of oxidation of the thiol that's important to recognize in a biochemical context, and this is the conversion of two equivalents of a thiol into what's called a disulfide. A disulfide is characterized by a sulfur-sulfur bond, and it amounts to an oxidation because we've gone from an oxidation state of minus two at the sulfur atom to an oxidation state of minus one at each of the linked sulfur atoms in the disulfide. As in the oxidation reactions we looked at previously, the mechanistic details here can vary a little bit, but once again, the basic first step is coordination of this sulfur to the electrophilic oxygen atom. If just for the purposes of illustration, we follow this step literally for a second, we end up with a species that has a neutral oxygen atom now and a positive charge on sulfur, and this is susceptible to nucleophilic attack by a second molecule of the thiol. This is ultimately how the SS bond gets formed with one of the sulfurs serving as electrophile and the other sulfur serving as nucleophile, and now the originally electrophilic sulfur has become neutral. At this point, a base can come along and deprotonate the positively charged sulfur, and we're almost to the product, all that's left and this is going to happen over several elementary steps, is the elimination of what I'll put in quotes as OH. Of course, it's not an oxygen atom per se, it's just an oxidizing agent, O+, that ultimately accepts a hydride to form an OH reduced species, quote unquote. In biochemical systems, this O+, could be something like NAD+, or NADP+. We'll explore these in more detail later in the course. One general point to note now is that what we've essentially done is eliminated H2 from the reactants in the form of Hb, removing a proton here, 
and OH removing hydride from the original thiols. This oxidation as an elimination of H2 from a substrate is really a general paradigm that we'll find in oxidation reactions throughout the course, and we'll explore it in more detail when we look at carbonyl reactions in a future video series. The resulting disulfides that form are important structural motifs in many proteins, as they can link cysteine residues, and the covalent bonds that are formed create a rigid link between different parts of a protein chain. And there are enzymes that catalyze the formation of these linkages in other proteins. The enzyme ER oxidoreductin is one example. This slide summarizes many of the oxidation reactions that we've seen so far in this video and introduces this interesting oxidation of a disulfide to this species with four oxygen atoms linked to the sulfurs. The basic idea, again, in all of these oxidations is that the sulfur atom is a great nucleophile, and it's a great nucleophile with respect to a great many types of atoms. Most of the general reactivity focused on carbon, but actually in a biochemical context, the coordination of a nucleophilic sulfur atom to an electrophilic oxygen atom is the basis of the antioxidant properties of thiols in the body. And this type of elementary step kicks off the formation of many of the oxidized products that you see on this slide. For example, a coordination of RSH to H2O2 could lead to the production of a sulfenic acid. Further oxidation of the sulfenic acid produces a sulfenic acid with a new sulfur oxygen double bond, and continued oxidation ultimately produces a sulfonic acid. These sulfonic acids are strongly acidic. They're highly analogous to sulfuric acid, right? If this R group were replaced with OH, this would be sulfuric acid. And so these are strong acids, typically with a pKa less than zero, and we see their conjugate bases sulfonates as le good leaving groups in organic reactions. Far too strong for a biochemical context, but we do see these in organic chemistry on a regular basis in labor on the laboratory side. Moral of the story, though, is that sulfur as a nucleophile can serve as a reducing agent and can be oxidized itself to form these oxidized products. And this is a kind of reactivity that's really unique to the thiol group that we don't see in alcohols as a result of the larger size and greater nucleophilic ability of the sulfur atom.